Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I've just had a conversation with Jean Ribeiro, the Portuguese director of photography. Jean is one of the finest EOPs working in Portugal today. He's very talented, very creative, very experienced as well. He's been awarded by many festivals and praised internationally. In fact, he's one of my inspirations and I've had the pleasure to talk with him for more than two hours. This is the first filmed conversation I'm doing for this channel and hopefully more will follow. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one. John, it's great to have you here. Uh, I'm glad you've accepted my invitation. I wanted to talk a little bit about cinema, about films, about you, about how you came to this line of work. Um, you know, I talked to you before. You felt like a, a very experienced and very interesting person. You have obviously a, a long career. You've been working at this for a long time. I'd like to ask you, first of all, what got you into, into movies? What got you into this? Into <laughs> uh, it, it's not that uh, that uh, expression that people usually say that from since I was young I was always wanted to work in cinema. It has nothing to do about that. In fact, I was uh, in contact with a uh, with a guy named João Pedro Ruivo, which is an assistant director here in Portugal, when he just came from Chinachita. And he was in uh, the set of Velanaveva from Frederic Fellini, okay. And he was from. Uh, a f she was a friend of my middle sister, and I was the youngest in the group. But my memory of that is that we were all seated in a sofa, and he was like uh, standing up, talking about that experience in a very passionate way. And I think that was kind of, uh, uh, it was a thing that, uh, it was really important to me and make me begin to think about this wish about working in cinema. That was the spark, the first time I that got I you... I think so, I, I've always been uh, in contact in, in movies, as I told you. Uh, my mother worked in a um, friendship association, who, who Portugal, U US... Uh, USSR, USSR, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and uh, they 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 screened films, and I remember the first one that really was amazing to see was Derzu Zala from Akira Kurosawa. Yes, I was around uh, twelve years old, more or less, but never had thinking about the wish of working in in movies. Then I went to to cinema school. Uh, I choose uh, the area of image. Uh, I always had this dream of uh, of being a camera operator, because light for me was something really um, uh, can we say mystical or yeah, sure. uh, very uh, difficult, very very far away. Uh, for me in this time that I thought I could achieve that but uh, I mean I got out of the school and start working in a production company and I did lots of documentaries and then start doing uh, feature films and it, it it's not that difficult. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that, you're saying, oh, it's, uh, but uh, it's something that uh, really if you had, if you have the wish or the will to express yourself by these means, mm -hmm. huh? it comes in in a in a very intuitive way from from you. But you have also to be lucky with the first directors you work, mm -hmm. with the kind of projects that you work, mm -hmm. because I think these these two things can really shape the way you face your professional life. Uh, I think. Probably shapes your career, the kind of projects yeah, that you I pick and so. the way that you approach those projects. I see. It, so. I was interested in, in the way, well, you mentioned light. Obviously, light is a very important aspect mm -hmm. in filmmaking. I was thinking of light as in, for example, photography, it's basically painting with light, the term, right? Mm -hmm. And cinematography, uh, cinema is also, in a way, painting with light because photography mm -hmm. and cinema are mm -hmm. very two very, mm -hmm. very close uh, arts. And um, you, I wanted to ask you, how do you deal with lies? How important it is for you when you 
when mm -hmm. you approach a project uh, yeah uh, actually not uh, g getting away from your question there is something that for me arrives before the light which is the space the space yeah you see mm -hmm. uh and and this the the space you film can really be at least for me the first thing I, I I I deal with to arrive to to the light. You see, also because for me, uh, when I talk about space or then art direction, it's something that uh, uh, I mean I can say eighty five percent of uh, cinematography is in the the work of the art for me in the set yeah. because it depends how which reflections your walls can give which mm. kind of textures exist mm. from now on. so so space for me is really my first uh, concern when approaching uh, a project i mean before that there is this uh, conversation with director and when you're doing locations uh, for example space uh, I barely not think about light, to be honest. Uh, I'm reflecting uh, wh when I start seeing the, the space. You see, so the space is a, is the foundation for you. Yeah, yeah that absolutely. Is the first principle. Absolutely, because because my there are two things in cinema before light that really uh, occupies my, which is how space can be represented, and uh, the other one, which is very far away from my understanding which is color <laughs> how 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 you can represent color how but we can talk about that later so sure. w when i mean about space uh, usually in the first locations what happened is usually uh, you arrive in a room and you you get yourself in a corner with a wide angle lens to take a photo from the space and mm -hmm. then you see at home so i start I start uh, thinking when I arrive home and see these these photos that they don't reveal uh, the, how can you say the, the truth about that space. Okay. So I I I manage to do this. Usually when I, when I go to a place, I try to search for what I can um, maybe express as the identity of that space. Mm -hmm. So if the, for example, if you should hear maybe the identity of this space for me could be these windows with this texture mm -hmm. that you were avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. these textures maybe can give me something interesting if there is a point of view to the exterior. Mm -hmm. So m the identity of this space for me can be this, mm -hmm. okay? So maybe from all this space, I take a photo here. What I really like to do is, is to draw. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have here an, ex an example that, that I brought. This is a small uh, uh, book of a, of a short film from uh, Mariana Gaivão called Ruby. Mm -hmm. And this is my location uh, uh, notes. You see? Yeah, let me have a look. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that film is... Uh, most of the sets are exterior. But when they are interior, when you draw a space... You have to be not in the corner, but inside the space. Mm. I want to see what you see from this door, uh, how this uh, shelf looks. Different so, perspectives from yeah, the space. So the first thing that for me is really important is not to be outside the space that you're going to film, but exactly inside the space. Mm. And the draw, uh, drawing the space helps me to understand it. Yeah. Another thing which is very important for me to start thinking about light is to imagine inside the space where actors will be. Mm -hmm. So uh, I many times take the place of, 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 of the mise-en-scene where the actors will be and reading the script and then light can arrive from that uh, point because also in a set... Uh, and you told before that uh, light is writing, ta, 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 ta. Mm -hmm. but yes, absolutely it is. But I don't see many films today that has this have this concern or this absolutely, or this attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So for for me, the first thing about light that uh, I'm worried is to light the the faces, the actors. Mm -hmm. The space is after for me. 
what I what and I'm not do, saying that this is the right way to do. Mm -hmm. It was the way that I choose to work. Yeah. Okay, and then what I see in the films today is that people are worried about the space, so they like the space, and the actors are inside that space. So there is this thing that uh, some uh, uh, DOPs say. Uh, I light uh, spaces, not faces. <laughs> they always mm -hmm. say I light faces, not spaces. Because if you don't have time then to to approach the space, uh, for me, face. When I say a face, I say a hand. I say a detail because you cannot forget that light. It's 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 a, an element that um, it's built to to classify things yeah, so a I, subject or an object uh, exactly it can be anything exactly yeah. so with with that kind of approach to light yes you can say this expression you can paint with light mm -hmm. because you are uh, saying uh, i want you to see this i want you to see that i don't want you to see that so we have guiding I, uh, yeah, the, yeah, uh -huh. the eyes of the spectator yeah, and, 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 and you so between uh, a pure black and a pure white, you will set your atmosphere. Because I, I, I can say, I want you to see that there is a shelf there, but I don't want you to see what is there. But I can put a spot there and you see there is a Latin di dictionary there. So, <laughs> you see, so, uh, uh, but that, that wish, usually ex is expressed in the, um, in the script, right? So mm. uh, the light should be expressi expressed by the will of the director, even if he doesn't talk, he or she doesn't talk about light, uh, he can talk about uh, what, uh, what he likes to eat, what he likes to, in music, what you see? Mm -hmm. And by that, you can um, guess more or less the atmosphere and of course the script which is something really yeah, so basically you're enriching the narrative and the mm -hmm. plot from the from the perspective of the spectator by the way that you approach the lighting on the film you're uh, you're kind of providing uh, a set of uh, an atmosphere and a set of elements for the spectator to involve himself with the film exactly right? and and the, the, another wish that that i really have and is is the effort that I do in every project, which is um, I imagine each film as a planet. This film is a planet. In this planet, the only people allowed to breathe there are the actors. <laughs> so if this actor is in the previous film, he would die immediately. <laughs> so that's that's why a little bit when I think about the films, but not I'm not doing that expressing first myself as a DOP, but I'm doing that, trying to express the wish of the script and the di director's wish. Of course, I prefer to do more a kind of light than other, but first is what you really said. It's the, the desire to express something, but not being aesthetic or something, mm -hmm. something that is unique, that has to live in this film and not in another film. Mm -hmm. So you've worked with uh, many different directors and, uh, you know, I, I, I bet some of them hmm. must have tried to come up with a different approach from that. Or did you have, do you have so, the liberty to do that in most of your projects or do you come across sometimes people that are willing hmm. to engage in a different kind of... Uh, you, uh, my, my way is not really, I don't try to in, impose uh, a, a vision, you see. So... One of the things that I know I really do well is to understand their head. Not all, I'm thinking about the, the two or less, that I could never guess if it was really that or not. But usually I, I can really understand what's in their head because you have directors that are really, they express themselves in a technical way. Mm -hmm. But there are other directors that don't know even what is a 25. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, so... I always try to be in the same level. You understand? Not saying I don't know what is a 25, but 
So this space, you want to see, uh, it's important for you to reveal the space in the first shot, in the end of, so building that, and not really imposing, but try to understand what is their dream about this film. What is Their vision. Their yeah. vision, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was thinking about, uh, I'm not starting with this with the books because we will be in prison in this, but for example... You can go ahead, okay, we can okay. go for the books o anytime. Obviously, there is this, this uh, great book from uh, Bresson, you yeah, know, and it, it was nice because I did a film uh, shot in uh, uh, Russia. We start in Russia, f uh, Germany, France, Portugal, which was trans from Teresa Vila Verde. Mm. And each day before we start, we do we did this. So, and we read this sentence. <laughs> it, this will be like the mojo of the day. But this is this has a very beautiful sentence that says. Uh, something like the film should be uh, how you dream uh, about the film with your eyes closed. Mm. So I try to understand that dream and try to be... I, I cannot have the ambition to be inside that dream, but at least I can be the one that can understand and can materialize mm -hmm. that dream. Yeah. Not imposing, but be working like in the car, you know, yeah. parabrisas, when it's <laughs> raining. So you you have to be like that. You tell me more about that, because I, I feel like this is the impression that I have and I don't have too much experience in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like, for example, the relationship between a director and a director of photography uh, should be very close in order to have the vision of the director portrayed mm -hmm. uh, through the director of photography in a faithful way. Is that correct? Is that a... It is correct. Uh, it is correct, of course. Um, how can I talk about that? You, you, you should always be... You are always the one who will materialize that. And the thing you have to understand really is if the director is really happy or he really says, oh, it's really nice because we don't have time to change, hmm. you know? Yeah. So um, if you ask me, oh, do you have examples of films where you have to change the light? Because, um, yes, like, uh, for example, not changing, but uh, one of the last films I did some years ago work with, with uh, Mark Martiz in a film called Great Yarmas, uh, Provisional Figures. Yeah. Uh, he's, um, he's a director that uh, is uh, very present in the set. Uh, be, uh, it's nice because he, he sometimes looks as an old film director. You know, he controls everything and that's really nice. And sometimes he arrives to the set and say, oh, let's try to turn off these lights. Let's try. And we will do it. And sometimes it was really better than what I did, honestly. So he's open to experimentation, to try uh, yeah, different yeah. solutions. When I, when I say that, it's like uh, you have, uh, you have to, to be open to change. But there were times that uh, he says, oh, but this light from this side, can we change it? They say, we can, but if we change this light, this and this will happen. Mm -hmm. And so the light stayed like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm really open because uh, I think many years ago, but maybe today there is this kind of uh, idea, which is, uh, oh, uh, I do the light, you work with the actors. The light is mine. And I always say, no, the light is from projectors. It's not mm -hmm. from anywhere. So, uh, and thinking about the perfect relation with the director. From my experience, of course, I have to talk about João Botalho, which is a director that is very um, aesthetic, but he's, he, he is a director that knows everything about sounds, uh, light, actors, how an actor should read the text. So with him is very nice. And if you think of some of his films, most of them, I don't remember one that you can say, oh, it has a bad cinematography. No, because he has this signature of light. The only thing that I do with him and, the, and that is the reason 
and I'm very proud of saying this, that I'm the only DOP that, that he start working uh, first time until now. Mm? Uh, because it was, some of them were great DOPs, but you say, no, you don't have to give opinion about my life. So I'm not that at all. So uh, the approach with João, and it's a, a person that I know really, really well, and it's very easy for me to understand uh, what he likes. And then having this understanding, what I ha my work is to bring something more mm. to each film, mm. and that's the way I work. We work together, and he's really open. Imagine to use a toothbrush mm. in a filter, <laughs> or to uh, to. It was not this one, but yeah, uh, I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> um, so. Uh, you, and we have examples of uh, of some stills of the films where you can see the the. Uh, but I didn't want don't want to push the conversation right now to this. But it's a director where you can use these kinds of filters that are painted in the set. So it's really open. But these things come first because in my mind they make part of the film, and I know how to think if I'm in his head. Yeah. The the happiness of this uh, friendship is that we we most of all like the same things. We have the same tastes. So um, so that that is why. So he's a director that you have to work saying. So I'm thinking the light like this, 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 uh, and he can give his opinion. He can give an opinion. Say, great, that's much better. Or I can say, no, because these are that. And we are very democratic in this uh, construction. And it's the people who just say, oh, Von Tad, he's very difficult. It's the <laughs> easiest director to work with. And, and I have really uh, a pleasure because, you know, I'm just sorry. Uh, he did this film that for me was really amazing, which, which is uh, Hard Times. He has an adaptation mm -hmm. called Tempos Difíceis from yeah. the Dickens uh, book, adapted for the fascist period in Portugal. And I saw that film when I was in cinema school and, and uh, it didn't look Portuguese, which, which is, a film is not good because it doesn't look Portuguese, nothing about that. But it looked a planet. <laughs> yeah, it was something that I saw uh, a lot of John Ford, mm -hmm. of course, that I after know he really loves, but it was a construction of a world and I knew some of these places because I grown up there, and that was not the way I knew these places. Mm -hmm. I never imagined that I could work with this director, but what what I told you is that you you can uh, simplify very much your question, which is uh, what I'm is interested in is imagine how you see this glass, not what the glass is. I want to know how you see it. Mm -hmm. And if I know how you see it and I am able to help you to see it even more the way you see it, mm -hmm. you can see it like this, you can see it like this. So if I can help you in that, mm -hmm. I'm happy uh, about this. So for me, all filmmaking is, is, is not um, looking at things, but it's how you, you, you recreate what you are seeing. Mm -hmm. And actually, sometimes with the crew I work, uh, I never say something like, oh, let's do a shot. I always say, let's create a shot. Mm -hmm. For us to have in mind, not something aesthetic, but something that is correct, how you see this. It's not what this is that interests me, how that's, you represent this. That's a very personal mm -hmm. way of, looking, of, of doing things, right? Uh, when you try to observe things and try to portray them in that very specific way because it's gonna depend from one person to another I feel like that's something that is missing from films nowadays you know the yeah. the personal look that you have on a film when you're a director of photography for example or a, or a director or a lighting mm -hmm. technician mm -hmm. um, we I feel like films nowadays are very very similar to each other and you could change the name of the director on these films and the they could be from all these mm -hmm. different people and I feel it's fresh it's so fresh to have films where 
when you look at them and you say, wow, this is something unique. This is something different from everything else. This has a specific character a to it. Personality. Yeah. yeah, but I think in our days, people feel well if they do the things that they see the others do. Mm. I, I, I don't know if I'm right. Mm. I think that people feel well if they belong to something that it's done the same way. Mm. Even the audience, maybe it's already expecting something to be done in a certain way. Of course, because they are uh, there. First, they're, there is no audience in cinemas today. <laughs> But uh, anyhow, uh, absolutely. And th there is other thing which, which is something that I'm always uh, fighting, which is the dictatorship of the technique, which is why today T TVs have to be like this. Come on. I know you, you can see one thirty three, four by three, but why? Why uh, uh, why you have now uh, most of the lights are LED and not... I know there is um, an evolution in the technique, but uh, what this evolution and capitalist way of this dictatorship of the labels are doing is uh, massifying something and uh, for example if i enter um, how can you say uh, a, a, a house that rents uh, lights equipment the first thing i do i go to the shelf that is more far away from the door because i know that there are the old lights are there full of dust i'm not getting these lights because they are different I go to these lights because I know how to talk with them and I know the answer and how they talk to me, you know? You so, have a bond with them, you have a relationship yes, but, 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 but the way? Yes, because, because with a very uh, simple thing, because of course I, I, I use sometimes these kind of lights, but the thing is, what I'm really scared about this is I feel that I don't control these lights. You understand? Yeah. Uh, the, the way I see, the way I told you, I like to, to that light can be an element that can classify things. You cannot classify in a movie things with this light. So usually what you see is a top light. Mm -hmm. It's a top light. So uh, you do a top light and then the films are the same. Uh, the places change. But that light stays the same. The scheme is uh, always the same. Yes, you know, and, the, and the if you work with a yeah. more punctual or classified light, if the places change, your light will change, will look different. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Rosa was telling me yesterday, she, she, she was on the phone with a, with a friend who worked as an art director. This... Uh, this uh, great woman, it's, it's called Zebrank, it's not a secret at all. She was able to work uh, with one of my absolutely respected uh, heroes with uh, the OPs, which is Henri Alekhand, that I'll talk about. And she did a film with Robbie Muller. Mm. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> And Robbie Muller said to her, like, uh, uh, I don't want to interfere with your work, but I will ask you, if you could paint the walls in a certain way and she asked uh, what way and when rosa was telling me i thought oh the guy said in a um, uh, you uh, mat uh, how can you say uh, opaque way not refer no robin was said i want you to paint it in a bright way because with the light i can remove the bright And if it's not bright, I cannot add this to the wall. Okay. So you see, and that is a good example how the light and why you you do the light change a little bit in the sets. But if you have the same style, if if the, the if uh, if Pedro Costa in the light she did in Vanda's room, if her room when I when I thinking about green. I always say uh, Fontaine is green. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's how I remember because it yeah. looks... Ab I, you don't imagine that room with another color. It's yeah. impossible. It's mm. impossible. So uh, if that room had another color, 
Of course, he had worked in a similar way because his light and his he worked with Leonardo Simões, which is a DOP, but Pedro Costa films like they always have amazing cinematography, yeah. you know? signatures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Which is authorship, mm -hmm. and that's what you said you missed in films today, mm -hmm. and. A, a film of Costa or João Botelho or even Teresa Vila Verde or whatever, uh, you can guess if you see a shot that is a film from them. Mm. You, you see, Pedro, uh, like if you see a uh, Van Gogh or a Rembrandt or a Hammershoy or whatever, mm -hmm. oh, this is uh, immediately recognizable. Yeah, so yeah. this idea of, of authorship, uh, which is something very unique in uh, in uh, and it was in european cinema you know uh, the, the 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 american uh, 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 the, the, in the studios in Hollywood in the 60s, in the 70s there were lots of people immigrating there from Europe and they were really um, amazed by this idea of uh, of Europe, of culture of uh, knowledge um, and uh, that is some, I, I, I'm really honest with you I really don't know, I, I'm not saying this in a proud way, I am really not aware of the films uh, that are done today. If you tell me, oh, this film is great, I, we stop, I go home and I see this movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, from some years till now, I only see the same movies. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, 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 German movies from the 30s, uh, German movies from the 30s, <laughs> uh, some, some uh, Soviet or Russian directors, um, uh, uh, Bresson, of course, Anto for me too. Yeah, yeah. Antonioni, of course. And what is amazing about these films is that, uh, depending on the day you see and in your mood, I can say, mm -hmm. you can see them in different uh, levels. So when I see uh, Red Desert from Antonioni, I, I already saw different Red Deserts, depending <laughs> in the day I, 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 I saw it, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's it. So in these times, uh, if you ask me if I'm frustrated about uh, how cinema is, uh, it's, it's not a question that time first I'm kind of sad mm -hmm. thinking about what um, uh, I mean it's, 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 cinema doesn't exist in the way I really love it and respect it and uh, of course there are great directors but um, it's something that uh, doesn't give me a kind of enlightenment anymore, you know, a kind mm -hmm. of uh, of something that I, we were talking in the a car. A sense of wonder, perhaps. Yes, and the, <laughs> in the sense that you are um, filled with something that you cannot uh, That's what express. I mean. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I mean. And the last time I, I, I felt that, uh, I, th I think it was uh, Horse Money. Horse Money, yeah, in the from Pedro Costa. Yeah, yeah. It's the one that has these shots in the street. Yeah. It, because uh, in the way, uh, when I see this, it's like uh, I know this street, but i never been there. Yeah, it's a different street, the same street, but... Yes, a, but he materialized yeah. that uh, idea of street, mm. that you kind of dream that mm -hmm. can exist. Uh, mm -hmm. So this kind of... Uh, uh, miracles don't happen um, very often. Uh, I absolutely uh, agree with you. Uh, mm. I feel like I, I, I agree with you 100% and I feel like uh, that's what's missing for in, in most movies mm. nowadays. It's uh, when I say the sense of wonder, I say wonder in Portuguese is uh, spanto. You know, when you when you're uh, yeah. or blown in, away in a more enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, enlightenment. Exactly. I think you don't have uh, a translation to part. Yeah. Enlightenment but, is uh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's exactly it. Uh, I feel like that's one of the things that impels me and keeps me 
fascinated about uh, films like the ones you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not often that you get that sense in in movies nowadays. Obviously, there are great filmmakers working uh, still today. There are good movies and great movies coming out today. But I feel like uh, in the past, uh, there used to be a different, uh, or at least there were a lot of films that had that sense of wonder. Uh, many, mm. many films like those. And I would even go to that, even if, you, if we look at something else, like for example, for me, there's something that is entirely different nowadays uh, comparing with the past, which is the cinematography itself. For example, the the composition or the framing or the lighting. For me, for example, I use I use this example a lot, which is when you look at the film from the past, you can stop at any point, any point in time of, in the film and you get a, hmm. a yeah. painting almost, you know, a picture, mm-hmm. like everything is uh, just made to produce this image that is fantastic, this moving image. Um, but nowadays, I don't feel the same. Uh, I feel like movies don't care that much about mm. the way that the image comes across. Yes, but, uh, but you know, the films you are talking, they use the shots as the element of construction of the film. And the shot that you are seeing in that moment has obviously relation to the previous and the next shot. Um, and the unity of the films were made also with uh, with time sculpting the time Mm -hmm. of course so in our days for example my brain is not prepared to see the number of shots that uh, exist in no oh it's already okay Uh, i don't see anything so these films also gave us um, the time in a way to belong to them you are sucked by these shots mm-hmm. you know absolutely and uh, and uh, and today yeah, and and also we, i think it it deals of course you have many uh, Jonas Mekas films or in the more in, that has a lot of uh, editing with the very but an, anyhow i think one of the the things that make things be the way they are now is also about the digital uh, the arriving of the digital or the video whatever which is people are more more concerned nowadays in doing recording than shots Mm. the idea of uh, action cut is something that it's very dissolved in 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 our days you know Mm -hmm. you you have I was thinking about Chantal Ackerman, which is also uh, uh, maybe with uh, that film Gentleman, Quai du Commerce, mm-hmm. uh, 23 Bruxelles, je crois. Yeah, yeah, so something like that. Recently <laughs> acknowledged as the best film by yeah. the ah, second yeah, yeah. sounds. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, you, there you see the time expanded and expressed in a very radical way, you know. Um, yeah, and 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 and, uh, and and when I say time of the shot, I mean uh, shots that are really manipulating in their composition. Because in our days, I'm doing a shot with you for a film, and then um, I close the, the the lens, and what I do is like, no, I will want to put this here. And you have all not always come on, but you have a, oh no no this can't be there because it was here continuity uh, yeah, yeah which is a, really a nightmare <laughs> and I see it's shot as a shot if you see a John Ford movie uh, these uh, things that the horses have that they put in these things you know yeah. uh, in every shot they are in one place yeah. and sometimes you have to do the wrong continuity for you. To think that the continuity is right. If an author talks empty. about that, uh, Yasujiro Ozu, he talked about uh-huh. how he didn't care about continuity. He mentioned how he would change objects in the mm. mise en scène in the way that he felt they looked better, and it didn't matter if there was a, a discontinuity from. Different but because shots. there, you know, the famous bag. He, no, no, there, he, he worked with the bag, ah. full of things. Oh no, I didn't know that. I think so. He's a <laughs> bag. 
Yeah. So let's see. No, here. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the thing is that uh, uh, the shots connected with each other, they tell you a story or they cannot tell you a story, no matter. So it's the way you build these shots that is really important, not the story itself. Yeah. It's, it's how you, for example, when uh, João Botelho says, uh, I did uh, an, ad an adaptation of the book of Disquiet from Tr but in this book, there are thousands of different films to be made. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, it's actually the way you film and the thing that is most uh, uh, lost today, which is uh, w the right place for the camera. Mm. And how can you... S oh, no. Uh, 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 uh. So when you see... It's strange because I'm talking a lot about John Four. I don't know why. <laughs> but <laughs> Or Bresson or any great director. You don't imagine when you see a film from them, you don't imagine that that shot could be done in uh, another place because it's abs and that is really difficult to achieve to yeah. achieve this uh, this uh, uh, I can call it perfection not because it's perfect but because it's correct for the story mm -hmm. you know how you how you and of course for me uh, as, as you know uh, uh, and it's something w when I, I give lessons uh, that I try to introduce the idea of uh, painti painting or uh, Bill Viola, of course I show some things, mm -hmm. which is for me the painting is the most free way to see how light is represented. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. you think about uh, Turner. Turner gives shapes by color you know the, the shapes are color they are not shapes uh, you have other paintings that uh, give uh, that are really so if if you can if you could give yourself an education about painting and, and how painters represent the light you will feel free when lighting a set because today also people are really slaved by um, an idea of reality, mm. which is, imagine, um, if there is a window here, uh, it doesn't mean in that scene in a film that your light should come from here. Mm -hmm. Of course, the light should come from the place that is right to the scene of, and for the position of the actor. Mm -hmm. And people are, oh, you will notice that. No, what you have to do is set the tone of the film and, and everybody, when you see Citizen Kane, you are thinking, oh, this light is... A... No, that's the planet. Oh, and there, there is a very... I don't know if I told you the other day that I read this recently, that uh, I think I told you, uh, that André Bazin, the, the French guy, told about Greg Tolland, who, who was the cinematography of uh, Citizen Kane mm -hmm. and, mad, and other great films, and he told that he was the most uh, democratic DOP in the world, mm -hmm. because with his death of field, he gives the audience uh, the possibility to look where they want. <laughs> and it's an amazing uh, sentence for me, because also I notice how... Uh, outrageous is the, the use of uh, 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 I mean you start uh, our conversation talking about still photography and that's really how I see the camera which is what you which lens will uh, what which f-stop which shutter which uh, color temperature you know mm -hmm. and that is the basic manipulation or the, the things you can manipulate to it to achieve the, the dramatic sense of a scene, you know? And what I see today is uh, how you use color, and that is, has to do with the LEDs, because you, you can't change the color in that. So, oh, it's funny, why won't you put yellow? Or, and it's like, <laughs> uh, uh, why? Uh, I think that's the, the main question here. It's 
because I was thinking about this as you were talking. It's uh, the sense of purpose in a shot. Yes, you know, yes that's yes. something that I see missing nowadays a lot. Um, sometimes you see shots that are meaningless, that they have no reason to mm -hmm. be there. Uh, they mm -hmm. have no preconceived notion about there. They yes, have no yes. purpose. Uh, yes, no but, but 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 you see, every scene and every shot in a scene, you should think about what is that shot telling and what that shot makes the story advance mm. and what is the value of that shot and that scene inside the the the, mm. the film that that's why uh, I can show you uh, don't be scared <laughs> uh, 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 to do that that's why in uh, in the films I I do I do, uh, this has meters and meters, but actually, what what is this? I have here uh, number of the scenes, you see. Mm -hmm. um, then I do this uh, synopsis of the scene, and then I I, I make things like uh, this means cold, this means green. Then I will make uh, uh, sorry, I will make uh, some appointments about uh, color about uh, camera filters, about uh, things. So what this means is that when I'm uh, shooting, I don't use the, um, the script mm. because I want to be obliged to see. This is 51. Today is 51. So I go here and I, I see. So f 52, it's this. Uh, f uh, 15 is this. So if we already shot this, this can give me an idea how I start. If that scene uh, ended in a dark way, maybe it's great that this could uh, begin with the explosion of light. Mm. Or maybe it's not nice that it begins as dark because there is an actor who goes to the winner and you can see that he's there. So this is really my guide. Uh, this is a, a, a document that uh, is, is also f from my, for my crew because we quickly go there and... Uh, uh, camera assistant can go here and see if in this day I thought about using a filter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I will use it. It's just a desire. Mm -hmm. So this is what, what, what really makes me uh, be inside and think uh, about what this scene means, what it makes the story move, blah, 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 you know? So uh, the, 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 this is meters and meters of this. <laughs> yeah, but, I can but, see. Uh, uh, that shows a, a tremendous amount of work and commitment to the to mm. the film, to the production of the film. Uh, uh, do you, yeah, yeah. Is it? I was going to ask you uh, at the beginning of this conversation how important it is for you to do uh, drawings and storyboarding, mm. and, but I already mm. got the yeah. the the reply for that. But uh, yeah, yes and no, because this deals about the film structure, but maybe before these or at the same time what i what i like to do is sit at home and uh, try to imagine shots and that i am able to do uh, i have here because this is all prepared of course <laughs> uh, so th th look th these are not storyboards you know mm. these are uh, uh, and what the drawings These are almost like mood boards uh, yes uh, what, what this can can give to me really is like uh, when I'm doing this uh, it, it's a nice answer that you will like when I'm doing this this takes time to do okay so with time I'm able to to have ideas you know mm -hmm. And, 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 and it's nice because I have here, you don't have to see. Then there is these uh, things that are more technique that deal with... Uh, Almost the, like a floor plan, right? Yeah, yeah. To, where, where maybe the, 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 the lights could, uh, could be. Uh, for example, here you see this. This, uh, this is a first intention that can lead me to, to, to something. Mm -hmm. And then if you see these ones... Uh, some, uh, you see, sometimes I, um, I, I also uh, see light as an element of uh, uh, exp exp to expand things or compress things, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, 
uh, it's also a, a way so a way of uh, giving shape of yes like and, and then things. this one uh, this one is really different because this one is from a, a film I shot uh, in Africa and it's uh, a, 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 a different approach it, it's 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 more I mean you you can think oh of course it's Africa is more colorful but, but it doesn't deal necessarily about that so from this point I can start to think uh, uh, to do some light schemes, uh, you know, like uh, to, to give the, to the crew. So usually uh, you are talking about c commitment with the preparation. Yes, because also when w imagine if there is a set that is being constructed or modified by the, the art crew. Most of some drawings like these are made. I go to the in the afternoon instead of working at home. I sit in the set they are working and I'm doing this. And why? Because I want, I don't want to feel a stranger when I start filming there. And at the same time, when I, when I'm working with my crew there, I'm kind of inviting them to a friend's house because I know that house, you know, I'm not a stranger anymore. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very nice that you don't know also the place. I like to be surprised, like, oh, oh, oh. but, uh, but this, this preparation, just prepares you for something else that yeah. is very, very, which is that nothing will be like this. Yeah. So if you are prepared for something and, and if it's not this that will happen, you will be more quickly, I think, uh, on solving things or having ideas. You Finding know. solutions or mm -hmm. alternatives, for mm -hmm. sure. I feel the same way uh, when it comes to shooting uh, a fiction project, let's mm -hmm. say a film or a short film. I do enjoy... Uh, Thank you for... To... You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I do enjoy going to these places before I go there to shoot them. I, I want to explore them and feel the mood of the places exactly. and uh, perceive the light and mm -hmm. uh, the sounds that uh, come over uh, from people, from uh, te technology or whatever. I, I, I need to get the sense of what's going on in that space before I take my camera with me and try mm. to shoot a, a scene in there. And that's uh, that's uh, an approach that I find useful for fiction filmmaking. But as you said, you can also come to a place for the first time and be yeah. forced, to, for example, in documentary sometimes. Yes, sometimes, place, yes. Sometimes. And, and have... it's very nice that you are able to discover that place filming it. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you will be more curious and you feel that. Uh, I was thinking about uh, one point where you talk, for example, for me, the, the, the thing that we can uh, be inspired for a location that is raised is uh, text, text from architects. It's strange. I'm not telling about, oh, uh, doing a film is like building a home. No, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, uh, some architects, uh, this uh, Swiss guy called Zumptor, he works with uh, another guy that, sorry, I don't remember the name. They have an amazing uh, text that tells everything you need to see when you're doing locations, which is the um, temperature of the place, the acoustic of the place, the um, how you feel the walls, the texture, okay. everything is absolutely the same thing as a film. So I always give to the students this uh, text also because there is this basic thing which uh, cinema stole from all the other arts. And, uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the, a way to incorporate a little bit this is to show uh, and share with people things that don't come directly from cinema. Mm -hmm. Of course, painting is the, the, the obvious the obvious thing, but also uh, how how music, for example, uh, I remember doing a film with André Gilmata, a film uh, called the, the, uh, Dervaux, it's the, the tree, tree, the tree exactly, that we shot on the Bosnia. So uh, I was not every day, but it's a film built with sequence shots. So I was very often listening to Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, <laughs> narrated by David Bowie. Mm. Why? Because I start seeing the shots as a music partiture. You can say partiture? Yeah, yeah where, where I you think it's a sheet. 
Ok. Mas que ele cheat. Yeah. Ok. So, uh, uh, os graves e os agudos de Bass and... Uh, trap, uh, bass. Uh, highs, the bass okay. and... Uh, Boo. Yeah. Ah. So, Boo will be represented by shadows, uh -huh. ah, by light. So, I, I, I start thinking about the shots, because they were sequence shots, as a musical thing. Yeah. I mean, I, for sure, thousands of DOPs have done that. Unfortunately, I never uh, heard about this, but there are. Uh, it, I'm not telling the truth. There is a, a DOP I love that I discovered the other day, which is Stanley Cortez in Night of the Hunter, mm -hmm. that he talks about. Uh, Uh, music uh, that inspire so uh, f for me uh, um, uh, music is a way also that can gives you a lot of ideas and here in this film okay they they were uh, we were shooting woods at night uh, we were shooting everything is at, was at night so Peter and Wolf was um, how can you know, I say it was a record that, that, that I have at home since I was very very young, mm -hmm. and uh, that came to my mind with this uh, David Bowie narration. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can show you just uh, two, two things that that I bought, which yeah. which is these two two albums. Uh -huh. but, and uh, the, the, uh, I know if, if you are. I, I'm gonna show it to the camera. Uh, Because I brought this uh, to answer a, a, a question that you didn't do. Uh, uh, <laughs> because if you if you tell me uh, what are you uh, as a person, how you describe uh, yourself, I would say uh, like the two B sides in these albums, mm -hmm. because they are uh, these are uh, an album from uh, 77, 78, recorded this one in in 76. And they, they, they were really important in the history of music because they are produced from, with Brian Eno. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, they are mostly instrumentals. And, uh, for example, I feel that this music rep is what I am as a person. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when I do classes in, a, in an Italy school, the first thing I ask before I arrive there is, that each student should uh, choose an image that can be their I identity as a person, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, the, it cannot be an auto-portrait, but it can be... Uh, it can be an image. Oh, uh, it I would have trouble finding just one image to to describe me. Uh, I would have to think a lot about it. That's why yeah. it's it's it. Uh, I never thought about. It's an interesting exercise, actually. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it maybe can be an object. Mm. Uh, uh, sometimes you can feel a mess like this shape or uh, perfect uh, as this. <laughs> Sorry, I will put it. So, but it's something that. And why do I ask that? Because I truly believe that the way you express yourself is really uh, intuitive uh, most of the times. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you can build in yourself this uh, culture of the things you like, that can be music, it can be wine, it can be painting, it can be whatever, you, when you are on the set, what, your work is most of the times what you are as a person. And if you are filled with things that you like, things will come naturally yeah. it's happened already to me that sometimes i i uh we do a shot and oh but this is exactly the same thing of this but i haven't thought about that it also happened already that i did something and i discover a very similar thing after mm -hmm. you see so i'm not trying to go after the copy but i'm always trying to go after the, the, the inspiration and so the, 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 we are a little bit running in circles but the, the, this is what uh, really I build after reading a script I build mm -hmm. an album with images to this is from uh, Limit isn't it? a uh, Brazilian film? yeah Limit I, I made you, a, a you, video about this you're film you're really good did you? <laughs> yeah I did, I did. Okay. this is, this I, is a I fantastic film you know, it's, um, amazing film yeah how He f how he sees things here. 
It's a great lesson. This is pure poetry in yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. This is uh, yeah, and it's this amazing. is surprising that you've just shown well, me this. I opened that by <laughs> chance, huh? Yeah. But uh, but uh, this 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 is the album from Drvo. This one. That oh, uh, uh, you use this as uh, uh, inspiration, yeah. yes, to talk with uh, with Andrea wow. and uh, yeah. And you see, w w it's something that is is uh, is really. Is interesting. They can, you see, we were doing Evans a, childhood in here. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you. <laughs> we were doing a color film, but most of the photos are black and white. Mm. Which is uh, <laughs> why? Because uh, I, I'm not daltonic, but uh, the way I see the world when I film is really black and white because I light very much uh, for the contrast. Yeah. So, uh, usually I work uh, always with the viewfinder in black and white, mm. which is my, my thing. Wow. And, um, uh, and I was thinking that maybe one of the reasons, it's here that book, one of the reasons that I, I grew up at home with, uh, with uh, several art books, old ones, and in this time the books were... Uh, in color, mm -hmm. but just in the middle pages. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, books used to have. Uh, you see, uh, yeah, uh, and usually, uh, I have Japanese the, art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this one uh, you have lots of like color, black and white, <laughs> and uh, my my memory from from this is that as a child, I don't know why, I always was more attracted by these pages than these pages. I, I, the ones in black and white. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so uh, maybe this make me... Uh, I, I, there is no reason for, for things, but maybe this uh, gave me this, uh, this uh, way of uh, seeing black, uh, black and white. I don't know. Uh, Could be, yeah. Uh, I find know, I black and white photography too absolutely really? beautiful. Color and plates. Color from plates, yeah. <laughs> from the one, which is something that you do. So for me, black and white is really important because it's, it's, it's more expressive, let's say. Yeah. So even in some films, for example, uh, the film from Yves Freire, uh, Letters from War, yeah. which was... Uh, turned to black and white in post-production because it was an I and um, f for me it's not a problem because uh, when you light to contrast it will look great from my point black and white or color if you put in black and white a film from Douglas Sirk uh, melodrama from uh, photograph by Russell Matty I assure you that it will be a great black and white film. <laughs> so, um, so this desire of black and white sometimes also deals with something that you were saying before about shots. They don't tell you anything. So, for example, in that film the, from Eve, the exercise I did was I thought that every sh that we are filming a, a silent movie, mm. and how I was able to express things without. Uh, we, without the, the, the sound, mm -hmm. which, which was something that uh, maybe I can show you now things, we, which was something that uh, I learned in. Uh, th this is a fantastic uh, mm -hmm. catalog from a, uh, Cinemateca. Mm. Uh, I need to get by this Ma too. Ma Maria João Madeira and Luis Miguel Oliveira from Cinema did this catalog. There is this amazing interview mm -hmm. from uh, Paul Schrader to Sokurov, mm -hmm. which the title is. Something like the life of an artist is uh, a really sad story, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and uh, there, uh, the texts from Louise and Marie are really uh, amazing texts. This is a very beautiful uh, book. And uh, why I was uh, showing you this is uh, when I talk to you about these three images that I really love: huh? uh, uh, mother and son from Sukurov which is from the 90s, I think, yeah. uh, was the film that really opened definitely my mind to the possibilities of cinematography. Because uh, you, you have that, uh, that kind of uh, lesson from uh, uh, German cinema. 
Murnau, Lang, Pabst, Strohheim, Stern. I, lo I love all that. But his film uh, teach me something else, which is how you could work in nature as this film. It has some interiors in the beginning. How you can work inside nature, not in a studio as the Germans usually did. Mm -hmm. And you can command uh, nature. Yeah. And this guy, for me, this that film is a masterpiece because the way he manipulates nature uh, deals Of course, a lot uh, with romantic painting from the 19th century, Friedrich, da, 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 da. but at the same time, it was with him that I learned that uh, I could have, uh, um, how do you say, uh, uh, um, tint, uh, 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 ink, paint, uh, a brush, pa a paint yep. and a brush, mm -hmm. and I could paint yeah. a shot. And The, the thing that really struck me is that he's filming uh, in some shots he's filming the world let's say against a mirror because he wants to film that world already in a b-dimensional surface and that is like wow you know <laughs> he's yeah. he, he he's he's doing that twice mm -hmm. not uh, uh, 3d 2d Uh, uh, 3D, 2D, 2D, <laughs> and that is something that, uh, uh, wow, really, uh, there is a, a, an amazing uh, text by Nick Cave he, here, that I didn't knew it, but it's here, yeah. that he says, I was in New York, and a great friend of mine asked me, invite me to see a Russian movie, and I thought, oh no, another boring Russian movie, <laughs> and then he sit in the second row, and he said, I cry from the first yeah. to the last frame of this film it's a mesmerizing film it is. Uh, and we it were talking about that mm. yesterday and you were you were talking about the, the image and the, the manipulation in, in, in the image because he also uses a lot of filters in the film I believe yeah, but yeah. for me it, what was impressive for me and I watched the movie a long time ago and I mm. was, I was uh, maybe 10 years ago I think I watched okay. the movie and what impressed me as well was uh, the, the time the time that things took in the, mm. in the film Mm -hmm. The way that it portrayed, uh, we mentioned the scene where um, the, the son leaves the, the mother by herself for some time and the camera moves and the film takes the time to show that moment where she's all by herself and then he comes back and during that time, we spend that time with her, with mm -hmm. her as a living person, mm -hmm. as somebody and we get to feel uh, the 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 atmosphere, the, the sense that the film is trying to portray that relationship between the two of them and it's so touching, it's... I can understand why Nick Cave cried the, the whole time during yeah, that yeah, film. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And there is something very interesting that uh, Sokurov... Uh, no, Sokurov? It's the correct way, Sokurov says, which is that this film can be seen with your eyes closed, just listening to the sound, and with your ears closed just seeing the film mm. because there is a sound film and an image film and of course the sound is something that is able to make you fly mm. and the image will be always uh, much more uh, earth seeing more 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 stuck eh? mm -hmm. and it's very interesting and uh, also the sound of this film is really Uh, it's really great. I mean, I, 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 um, I, I mean, uh, I, I love another. Uh, I think you haven't seen this, um, this uh, tra travel elegy that I talk you about. That the, he travels to a museum. Then I, I like very much that one. Uh, it's uh, elegy, elegy de viagem, elegy from from the a voyage yeah, something uh, uh, that he goes to a museum and it's great because he films paintings that they look like real world and then she feels, she feels the real world that look like paintings. It's a wonderful <laughs> mess. And then he has that one that I really love, which is uh, Maria, which is one of his first documentaries. Mm, I haven't they, seen yeah, they are great. And then... 
Uh, I mean, Taurus, oh, okay. But then his last films, I'm not... Uh, the first ones are great. Uh, Whispering Pages. Uh, yeah. There is an old planet in that film. There, but You've seen The Lonely Voice of Man? Yes. I yes. find that movie yes, also yes, yes, fascinating. Yes, yes yeah. but his la this last one, the Louvre one, for Faust. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, they are really um, okay, um, but but at, uh, for me, in fact, mother and son really uh, make me. F for example, one one thing that, that that I like, it's not the technique at all, which is um, uh, some. I ha because my background is documentary. There is always a frustration when shooting outside because you cannot um, how can I say you cannot uh, uh, impose yourself to nature uh, a, so I start building these these uh, filters uh, that I put uh, and you can show some images that, that I cut and then after and I, you can show some examples of uh, these uh, I will they'll be on the video yeah, yeah. And um, and then I start doing this. I can put maybe, yeah. But but th th this kind will produce more like um, a vignette. Mm -hmm. What is interesting about these these filters is. But it's very subtle from what I've seen. From what you s you've you've shown me, <laughs> it, it gives a very organic effect. Uh, for example, when you look over here. You see, it's obviously very clearly cut, but when it comes through... Yeah, because I want to film, impress you, come on. <laughs> um, there is a shot that I can, you can show that I use this to hide the tourists that were in, in the... Uh, in the oh, okay. You see? So, but this deals with a thing that, uh, that uh, is really important to me, which came from silent movies, but previously from uh, certain uh, encounters of the certain kind from Spielberg. When I saw the premiere as a kid, I was really smashed because we talked about that. I grew up in this period where uh, UFOs were like, uh, you know, <laughs> I was a kid, I was fascinated by that. Yeah. And then that Spielberg movie came and I was so impressed when that uh, mothership arrived and opened this door of light mm. so this concentration of light in in the shot it was really that something that obsessed me then instead of this i start using uh, things like this these are uh, simply andy filters from light mm -hmm. that i cut this can cut uh, one okay, stop diamonds, this one <laughs> Uh, so you can do something like uh, uh, yeah, you can use them to yeah. For example, to certain yeah. Uh, imagine, uh, imagine, imagine to highlight certain areas or or people or uh, uh, objects. Really, exactly. So, for example, uh, that was how how can I um, command nature with this when I don't have light uh, to use artificial light? If I reduce the light around me i can create light removing light mm. so imagine that w we were doing a shot of uh, david dockney uh, and we wanted uh, people to look at two things uh, what he is painting mm -hmm. and uh, imagine uh, this is uh, an imagine this one can be his face. Mm -hmm. So I would cut this for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And I assure you that you don't... What you notice here is that there is a, a light here that is not here. And there is a light here in this face mm -hmm. because I'm just removing light. Yeah. So I even use this on documentaries. In Africa, they are really useful when you don't have light and you have to do an interview. And what I do is cut again this and I put here the face. Mm -hmm. I put the light around, like imagine six stops or whatever down. And you look at the face and the 
people look like they have a light on their face. They don't. Mm -hmm. They have the same, yeah. which of course the lesson is what you see in light and colors all, always deals with the, rela the relation of the things you have in the shot. Mm -hmm. So that was the way I learned and managed to to um, uh, to to install myself in nature and say. Oh. <laughs> so the so also this. But this is may, maybe too technique. This uh, in with done with the camera, uh, which is the the F X six or F X nine. They have something. I I I'm not the te te technical guy at all. These are Sony cameras. I think I use Sony cameras. Yeah. So FS7. they have usually the ND filters that are in the cameras. You make pick one, mm. pick two. Talk. Yeah. These cameras, no, they work like a, a volume in a stereo. Oh, I see. So what I do is like, I can have, imagine, uh, in the in the series I did with Ivo, there was this scene that was, uh, he is uh, seated uh, in, the, in the opening of the cave, smoking all night till the dawn arrives. And say, oh, maybe we have to shoot it. No, you don't have to say that because I can give you that scene when what with in one shot. So what I do is like I put this in Ivo Canella's face. Okay, he's smoking, and everything is uh, some stops underexposed. But you see his face, and then gently in the ND, you start opening, opening, and the day is coming. In the speed you want the day to to be in. Yeah. So it you manipulate the. Yes. Yes. And and and, and light. yeah. And also you can do the opposite, which is it's day. What it, these shots has always, uh, they have always to be done in day. You can do the opposite. Is day and night is coming. Mm -hmm. Then in the grading you can uh, also manipulate the color temperature. That I think you can do in the camera. But that I would leave for, for the grading uh, <laughs> process, you know. <laughs> and uh, the only thing that this is, uh, it's a limitation, is that when, when all, I mean, this example here will be a very risky thing. Why? Because he will move his hand mm. doing the, <laughs> the paint here. Yeah. But if it's something like, uh, imagine... Uh, W wider shot uh, in the woods mm -hmm. maybe I will do this shot here and do this but Frederick did it already in the painting if you notice yeah. and that is the, the great lesson of the painting mm -hmm. so to reproduce this kind of sensation uh, you always have to deal with the, with the manipulation and you can create uh, like uh, uh, when you have artificial light you light where you more or less want when you have the sun, you can uh, use the sun with this process. The thing is that if this guy goes to the woods in this direction, this will work. Mm -hmm. But if you are smoking with your face here and then you f do this, you enter the filter. Yeah. But uh, maybe it, uh, it looks good. This, this, sorry, just because for, for, uh, the toothbrush is something else. It's something that you can use in the lens and I can Imagine, I have a shot, uh, you have my shot, and this shelf is in focus. Mm -hmm. But I desire that this part of the shelf is out of focus, and this one stays in focus. So I gently put uh, this on a clear filter, mm -hmm. you see, and I start uh, with my finger, oh, this is too mm -hmm. much, remove this. Is, so. What really uh, is my great pleasure uh, in filming is uh, is uh, uh, being able to 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 work in the shots and create the shots. Of course, that doesn't happen even uh, these I use just with John Patel, you know. But <laughs> if you if you think about Asian films, lots of them used Vaseline things like that. Mm. But I remember Toothbrush maybe can work uh, when we can see some examples on his uh, films also. I was going to ask you that because I find these uh, unconventional solutions, let's mm. say, I find them fascinating and I was wondering where did you 
get the inspiration to do that or where did you learn to to use that or did you come by yourself did you try uh, the, for example these these uh, these uh, strange filters um this this have an, a very nice story because in documentary what happened to me many times i was in places that the director wanted a shot imagine you are the camera and he want to do an interview here but they have the exterior and i don't have light to compensate the exterior interior. so what i did was cover the exterior the exterior with the nd uh, 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 graduated filter, mm. which means I will cover till here to outside with an ND filter. Yeah. Okay. And I saw, oh, that's nice. From that step, I use a lot ND graduated filters on top and bottom of the shots to concentrate the light mm -hmm. more in the middle of the shot. Mm. And then I start thinking, oh, I will, it will be very nice if I can work with the color filters that I can paint. But the first experience I did was with the candle smoke. Like, it didn't work. So <laughs> these are uh, some uh, things that are called uh, Ecoline, I think, which is, uh, which is a very uh, 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 kind of, uh, for example, these. So a lot of these were like a trial and mis take by yourself you you were trying to to come up with solutions by yourself uh, these were these, these were made for a, a shot yeah yeah and they drew i mean for example uh in the in the in the film of this quiet you have a lot uh, these shots that also could, but I, I don't remember for example th this is very old but after you paint you can like this and you can uh, modulate the uh, and the more uh, sometimes and then I have uh, ones in uh, different colors. You see, yeah. uh, so uh, th th this thing come with the colors. So the other day, th there are two things. The other day, I think I talked to you that I saw a film called The Innocents mm. for, uh, with uh, Freddie Francis cinematography. Yeah in an amorphic master cin great 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 movie and john bailey which is a cinematographer he do these comments and he said uh, yes but freddie francis usually painted filters too and then okay so it's not I'm, and the other other dop that i knew that did this is uh, jack cardiff he did a film, most famous, uh, Black Narcissus from Michael Powell, mm -hmm. which they used uh, uh, a painting to simulate uh, a, a big mountain. Eh? And uh, I saw some years ago, by chance after this, but th that doesn't, which is um, a documentary that is in YouTube, which is called... Uh, Cameraman Life and Time of Jack Cardiff, where he um, explains his relation to painting this and that. Uh, of, but the first uh, guy <laughs> that was really important, it was the, this one. You, you can see this. Uh, <laughs> the Light and the, Shadows. The yeah. Lumière des Ombres. The, the Lumière des Ombres, which is from Henri Alleca, mm -hmm. which is a guy that maybe the most known film is uh, uh, La Belle et la Bête, Beauty and the Beast from Jean Cocteau. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Which is, which is oh, wow. a light. So, this book. <laughs> it's, just look at this shot and this. No, no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> this book, it's not uh, a technique book. This is a book, how he says in the beginning, for the ones that are interested in light. Uh, in light. Yeah. And then he analyzes artificial light, uh, sun, this, that, and that was really uh, a revelation to me. Well, the other day, uh, where, where I have this about uh, Jean d'Arc from Carl Dreyer. Uh, it's yes, he, uh, he has some examples of, uh, of, of films. He, and the other day, sorry, Mazel. this was uh, last uh, Tuesday. You, okay, and I arrived to the French cinematographer site, mm -hmm. and look what I saw. Ah, uh, 
podcast Filtre d'Henri Alecan, conservé par la Cinémathèque française. <laughs> so, that's a treasure. <laughs> yes, but at the same time, that I knew, he, he also worked with this kind of system, you yeah. know. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, many DOPs, if you say, oh, uh, put, uh, I mean, put a deck filter, the first thing they say, oh, no, no, but guys that... I won't tell you the name, guys that are very experienced, they will say, no, 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 you will notice that, you uh, no, you should uh, modulate. Yeah. There is a story that, that Jack Cardiff uh, tells in that documentary that they were doing uh, this uh, film called, uh, from, from the, the Russian novel War and Peace, mm -hmm. okay, also. and they were in the studio, and they framed, and then they saw all the lights are in the frame and uh, and uh, and Cardiff says okay give me a, a, a mirror and a brush and we paint and if they are not the sorted yeah 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 but you, you, don't, you don't and uh, this film was produced by the great uh, Dino De Laurentiis uh, producer uh, you were crazy and Jack Cardiff said no but the problem is that it was fresh and there was a drop of <laughs> <laughs> and then you have this amazing set in studio with snow and very wide shot. And he, if I see the tourists, I cover them. I, what, what will you do? So that's where you get your inspiration from. A lot, uh, a lot. Yeah. So these old uh, cinematographers really um, are. Uh, there is one contemporary one that I really like, which uh, he lives in Portugal. He, which is called I never met him but I really admire him he's called Tim Salminen he's um, a, Aki Karismaki yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and what I see in his work is that he he likes to sorry to say he likes the shots he, he doesn't put the light for you to see the shots he likes the shots do, thinking about what he wants to show in the shot Uh, and uh, and that is very very uh, that's how I like I mean uh, did you learn a lot of that from film school or your studies or did you learn that by yourself by watching documentaries reading books or uh, by talking to other people in in, that, yeah. in cinema school in our days uh, there was something great about our school because we were our teachers were professionals Mm -hmm. But if you ask something about a film, this is a true story, they had uh, done, how did you do that? That is something you will like to know, but I won't tell you. That, the, uh, these they wouldn't share that uh, no. information no, and no, experience. No, 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 no. But that doesn't make any sense. They're no, teachers. No, they're they're, no, they're no. supposed to... No, they're not. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, when I got out of school, I started working in a company... Uh, but of course I learned a lot uh, in school, I, we saw Ford, we saw Dreyer, we saw many great films and I learned a lot. But after the uh, school is finished I started working in a company uh, called Fabrica de Imagens and they produced a cultural program, half an hour program called Cine Magazine which was something I, I forgot to tell, which was one of the things that really made me go to cinema. I, I taped in VHS all this <laughs> weekly program, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I was doing that program, mm -hmm. as, and that was great. So doing that program uh, made me, in the third day, of third day of work, I was in Cannes Film Festival to do a reportage, in the year of uh, Basic Instinct by Paul Verhoeven and uh, Fargo from Cohen. Mm -hmm. So I filmed uh, uh, Michael Douglas uh, uh, because uh, then the director of the pro, Fran Mach uh, <laughs> Mach Silva told, oh, but I, I interview your father in Festival de Troia, Kirk Douglas. My father lo lo loves party hamburgers for everyone. <laughs> no, it was imagine the Cohen brothers, uh, all of. Uh, I I didn't knew who was Sharon Stone. I mean, as I say, who is this girl that <laughs> looks so cool? But, you know, come on, it's Sharon. I I, did, I didn't knew her. So, um, and then uh, in that working in that company, 
there was a very 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 important person for my formation uh, as a technician and also as a human being absolutely which was a guy that already died called Gé Luis Carvalhosa he was a DOP and basically we call him uh, the master uh, okay also uh, as in a almost Star Wars way of respect <laughs> you know and, uh, and and these guys in this company, they, their back, uh, background was really uh, featured films and a lot of documentaries in film. Mm -hmm. And then they formed this company because it was the first, it was 93, 94. And I was with Gé Luis uh, walking in Croisset. And oh, let's go to this, uh, li uh, this bookshop. And I entered the bookshop. I look, and there was uh, Francis Ford Coppola seeing some books because he was the director of jury that year. <laughs> and then he looked, Joel Luis at something, I can't believe this. And he takes this from the shelf. Wow. And he says, I'm here searching for this book. And he, and he said, you have to buy this book. So we have in that uh, time... Uh, uh, money to that uh, the production gives you to it, mm -hmm. and all that money went. To, <laughs> to the, <laughs> but but <laughs> this book uh, at the time uh, cost something like seventy five euros, which is money. But come on, it's not that uh, this book uh, today in the, in the internet you can find it for five hundred euros, euros things yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. But there is a previous edition much more, uh, mm -hmm. and and he uh, he told me. Joanzinho, he called it Joanzinho, buy this book. <laughs> and that was really a blessing to know this great man. And he oh, oh, he did he didn't give me a chance. This one that it's for me, I will ask if they have another. They have another, it's for you, you buy it. <laughs> so this was really something that uh, fulfilled uh, my life and my in my imagery, even at the time where my dream was operating the camera you see i just mm -hmm. starting my first feature film is uh, i've done it uh, 23 years ago i know it's a long time mm -hmm. but uh, my major big film it was like uh, 2006 which was trans from teresa mm -hmm. i mean with the crew with uh, all these yeah. so this uh, book also shaped me a lot the way I see I, I see the world creating shots and all really the DOPs I love. Uh, you have uh, uh, Karl Struss, uh, I mean, uh, Sunrise from Murnau is really uh, amazing film. Yeah. So I'm really fascinated by all this German uh, period, which there is a guy that his role is also really important. That The other day I discovered that he was a st assistant from this guy, assisted that guy in the camera, imagine, mm -hmm. which is a guy called e uh, Eugene Schuften that developed the, um, uh, the trucage of Metropolis. Oh, okay. How you use mirrors, how you use this. So that is why also I, I, I love to create some shots using this system where you can uh, do some kind of phantasmagorian uh, uh, appearances and disappearing shots. Also, mm -hmm. there are examples that we, we, we can show. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, this kind of uh, way of manipulating the image deals because, I, uh, for example, this guy Eugene Schuften is someone that went, because of the war, to the United States he did, um, he did, I, I never remember the, the name of that movie, which is, there is Color of Money from Scorsese. And there is a previous film with Paul Newman. Mm. Uh, uh, the, I have the, the Spanish uh, DVD, I just remember the name in Spanish, I won't tell because I'm ashamed. <laughs> so it's a black and white movie that Shuftan was the OP. Okay. And... Uh, took long time for the American Association of Cinematographers except this guy. Mm. So there are really stories about uh, the OPs and American cinema that you see how they are kind of scared about artists, let's mm -hmm. say. Uh, you have there a folder 
that says like images that uh, I like. For instance, a great film from Coppola uh, called uh, Rumble Fish, which is a black and white uh, film, w uh, where the um, the the DOP uh, in one of the sets in the exterior of the house he painted the shadows. Mm. Oh, the shadows are always there if it's night, I, I mean. mm -hmm. and uh, and he was very. Uh, I think they did something like that in the last year in Marian Bats. Ah, of course, right. of, uh, course uh, of course, of course, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sasha Vierny is the yeah. name of the, of course, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not by chance that Coppola showed before the production uh, German cinema to, to the crew doing Rumble Fish, mm -hmm. but it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, and in the United States they said... Uh, but how this is all wrong this guy is crazy well, <laughs> and he was and i think his career was a little bit uh, uh you know like uh, uh, yeah. uh, they were very hard on on his work because he was doing something that i mean it's poorly artistic that you should see that film it's amazing i gotta watch it so no no it's amazing it. i have some stills in this album mm -hmm. and it's really amazing black and white how they create in tulsa uh, there is smoke uh, sometimes and you don't even care from uh, the smoke is coming from a machine you will almost see the machine in the frame <laughs> but it's up and then there is another film that they're talking more about more recent uh, uh, films which is Bram Stoker Dracula from Coppola, which is mm. a cinematography lesson from my, Michael Bauhaus. Oh, really? uh, I haven't seen the film yet. Uh, okay. I've heard about it. Uh, Masterpiece it. book. Really? It's a book. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this is, for me, the most faithful film adaptation for that book. But the, the, in the Coppola's head, he wanted to make all the tricks in the camera. Yeah. So you have... Uh, you have uh, uh, Dracula talking to, to Jonathan Hacker, his Keanu Reeves, and then the shadow of Dracula is the shadow of a guy that is out of the frame, that uh -huh. mimes his, and all of a sudden the shadow grows, and it's <laughs> like, wow, and I didn't, because he, the, 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 he moves, the actor moves, but you see there is something kind of uh, uh, not a perf and that unperfectional part of the frame that the shadow is not synchronized with the Dracula movement, Gary Oldman. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because it, it puts you even in a, the shadow doesn't move at the same time, you know. Uh, so and, uh, and uh, another thing uh, uh, I, I then let you talk, sorry because I am scared to forget. The other <laughs> thing that our yeah. days that I'm really um, sorry or, is that how can you think about light not thinking about shadow? Uh, uh, so for me, uh, when I approach the light of a film, one of the things also, uh, two things, one is the atmosphere, pure black, poor white. In these two points, you are blind. Okay? Mm -hmm. So how blind and how much you want people to see. So that's what you can call the atmosphere of the film. And then in your shot, which, how is the the weight of uh, a shadow or of a light. Mm. So usually when I light a set, before I think the place of the projector, I think where I want to put the shadow. And if I say I want, we are doing here um, a stupid uh, horror movie. I want your shadow to be on the top uh, of that shelf. So it's very easy if I draw a line between the top of your shadow head to here I know the place of the light. Mm -hmm. If I want the shadow to be the same size as you, uh, it's another... So if I want not to have a, a, a shadow... So today, the sources that are done today they are done in a way to erase shadows. Mm. Yeah. If, you, if you dream of 
diz uh, 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 cinema noir American uh, cinema noir uh, diz uh, B film series B uh, uh, Roger Corman uh, Hawks uh, talking about Jack Turner as well uh, of course uh, uh, Night Walk of the Hunter uh, Walking them. with a Zombie uh, yeah. uh, uh, Cat People yeah. also so Cat People you never in that, you never see uh, anything Instead of a shadow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the great lesson. If you don't see, it's much more scarier, of course. Yeah. So, uh, how is possible? So today, some directors say, "Oh, there is a shadow there." So it means <laughs> that the projector is there. I say, "Yes, the projector is there." Oh, but you can avoid the. Sh yes, I can. <laughs> but listen, maybe if I go up, uh, eyes, you know, of the. Uh, sh So, uh, there is a dictatorship about this idea of that shadows should be... A, in some films, obviously, you should not... So, but for me, shadow is something that modulates and, and have interested... Uh, I'm interested in that. So, in, in most of the times, I think where the shadow will be, and that, will, uh, that road between shadow and character will lead me to the place of this light source. I feel like that's the way a painter would look at the canvas uh, before uh, painting the no, subject. No, no. I feel like it's very similar. I don't uh, know. The, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because uh, you, by my drawings, you know, <laughs> they're not very talented. Well, clearly, uh, there's there's a relationship because you have drawings and paintings. Basically, the, those are no. almost like paintings. No, but uh, but the, the, I, here I want to express something. And And already here you feel contrast, or you feel uh, uh, cold, or you feel warm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, then in reality, um, it's something else. And and uh, yes, it's 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 uh, films once were so modern, you know. I I know, uh, and I usually say this to my friends playing, but. Also, it's true because um, sound, sorry to say like this, fucked it all, you know? <laughs> because when sound arrives, cameras should be in a big uh, construction thing, not to be heard uh, the sound of the camera. And uh, in, in a moment where film, if you think about uh, Abel Gans, if you think about... Uh, Uh, Blitzer with uh, Griffith, if you think about uh, Pabst, if you think uh, Murnau, uh, they were so free, so image free, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I learned with with this post by John Bailey of uh, Sunrise by Murnau, uh, that he's saying, look how the actor walks to the door. Oh, it's strange. And then he says, Yes, it's strange because all the floor is like this. <laughs> okay, so he has... So, Murnau did that to feel the weight in the actor to go to the door. Mm -hmm. And then the table... And then you start... But this table, what is happening? Yes, the table is like uh, in two legs uh, up. So... Uh, Uh, all this manipulation of the space and uh, mm -hmm. to, to build another planet mm -hmm. is, is uh, you have here in Portugal I think it was in a Morte Perdição from Manuel de Oliveira that if the camera is there this table will have the shape of the perspective oh, okay. <laughs> Orson Welles moved the ceilings down to, yeah. to, to, to have this So all this cinema is manipulation. Uh, sense, not anymore. Uh, uh, not anymore. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It used to be. It <laughs> yes, used to yes, be. Yes. And in 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 a moment that it was becoming assuming as an art uh, invention, uh, it was like there's an obsession with realism at the moment. Uh, I yeah, think yeah, 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 yeah. In, in all, movies. in all, in all the things in the literature, in yeah. in this and that. So. Um, And this thing about uh, the space, I c can't I tell you one more thing? Uh, you yeah, can tell anything sorry. you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is something that I learned with... Uh, with uh, yes, it's here. 
with the Orkney that I will. Uh, um, so, uh, if we think about uh, about the way images are built in the Occident Occidental world, our world is really made of most of all of rectangles and squares. You know, this table is uh, rectangle. This window is like this. These shelves are like, and, and then you, you, you think about the problem, which is so if you're filming inside uh, a gear in Mongolia and that's a circle, mm -hmm. how you film that, how mm -hmm. you light that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that happened a little bit to me when I did a film in Middle East and I arrived to the set and the windows, instead of being here, they were like here to the ground mm. because it's like that. Uh, so this is one thing, but the, the, where I want to arrive is that the Occidental world was totally uh, slaved by something that it's called perspective, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have the, the, the perspective that was something that was invented in the Renaissance, yeah, okay? And the painting in Piero della Francesca and... For example. Uh, yeah, in uh, Masaccio. Uh, and, uh, yes, and Giotto. And Giotto, uh, Zivondoni, of course. Great uh, painters, great everything, mm -hmm. but the thing, and David Hockney, I didn't bought that book. He has a book called uh, Secret Knowledge, where he studies the use of optics in the construction of paintings. Mm -hmm. But optics can mean uh, this part of the glass here, you saw. So, you will lead to camera obscura, these kind of things. Mm -hmm. But the, the lens that are filming us are built slave by the perspective idea. You know that. So, yeah. so, but there is something about filmmaking when you start traveling that you should think, which is uh, th th that construction in, perspe in the perspective gives you one thing. The, if you're seeing a Piero della Francesca, you have to see it from one point, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. It's like from that point. Yeah, from a single point it, perspective. Yeah, it's yeah. a fixed shot. Mm -hmm. And some of these masterpieces, you can feel they are, how can I say, uh, they are the result of uh, mathematics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are kind of imprisoned by that. Yeah. And this guy gives the example. If you see the uh, drawings that Rembrandt did uh, freely outside, how free they are compared mm. to the paintings. Yeah. Okay. But if you move to China of Japan, the way they approach perspective is totally different. Uh -huh. The Arabic miniatures as well. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the the, the, the tapestry. Orthodox uh, frescoes as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, the thing that I always try to study is not to be free of the lens and of that perspective, but how I can approach with the, these lens things that can give me the idea of another perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, I lose every time. <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh, imagine, he has a, a, a... Imagine that we the shot is from there and we cut the table like this. But imagine, and th this is not me talking, it's David Hockney. Mm -hmm. And he says, imagine if we pick the point from perspective that is there, we push the point and you make it reverse way. <laughs> you see? Yeah, yeah. So this table would not be cut like this, would maybe be like this, mm -hmm. you know? So knowing that, and of course there is this thing, if you see uh, Chinese of uh, Japanese, these things, or a roll, or these uh, divisions they have in the house, you, you, don't, you cannot see that with a fixed camera point, you have to do a traveling mm -hmm. to learn these paintings, huh? yeah. because they, they are scrolls. You have, to, you have to travel with them. So there are these two uh, paradigms of the way you build images and the way you move the camera. Mm. <laughs> you see? And that is something that is kind of uh, always in my mind, which is uh, because in the beginning, when you start learning about uh, painters, 
and uh, you start to understand perspective is like great is like amazing but i'm honest because at that time when i start learning that i don't even saw that in the world could, which is really stupid but i i haven't thought that in the world could be something else you know and uh, and then you try to discover the other ways of representation why i should uh, say that uh, the right color for this is black if for another culture black means another thing and that's that's the, the 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 thing of the colors that is really difficult also for me but my aim is really always how you deal with the space how you can make the space looks bidimensional or with a death or with um, you know so renaissance is a great uh, lesson of course but uh, trying to destroy that and because of sokurov uh, for example in this in the film of this quiet from john butail i i i shot the shots against the mirror but uh, use the distorted mirror mm. you know yeah. so um, I have uh, kind of shy ways to try to work with the space if the film is obviously open and makes sense of, in the film to do that but uh, but it's very difficult because for example uh, one day I thought that I would like to build uh, something that you can have uh, imagine uh, three uh, uh, photo cameras that film in the same plate with the same lens with the same focus and instead of having one perspective you have three mm -hmm. uh, what that will give you to the to, to the space w one of the things also this guy answers which is he has this uh, f uh, work in uh, photography in a Zen garden, which is very cool, mm -hmm. that he photographs his feet and and the space in front of him, then he moves a meter and he does the same thing. So he puts the photos all the way and that for him is the interpretation with photography from the Chinese Asian masters deal with the painting, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And also um, how interesting is uh, learned for you to know that uh, Chinese millionaire painting didn't use uh, horizontal line mm. or uh, how things are dissolved and mixed and finally how nature is represented and how the human being is so small. Yeah. Renaissance <laughs> is the opposite. The man is the major of it's everything. It's the center of the painting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these are things that someone that wants to be a DOP or a filmmaker or anything should learn that it is not absolute uh, truth in one thing or another thing you know mm -hmm. i don't believe that man is the measure of everything mm -hmm. and i'm not uh, so much ecologist to think that nature so i believe that uh, there is this story of, of werner herzog with klaus kinski in fitz mm -hmm. uh, fit, no not fitz Geraldo, i think Ag aguirre Mm -hmm. uh, there was another fight, not as violent as Fitz Fitzgerald. <laughs> that, that One of the many fights. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in the beginning of that film, there are big mountains with people this size. Yeah. And uh, of course, Lonsky is why don't you shoot a uh, close shot of me and shooting all this shit? <laughs> so, uh, so the scene in moral is also this is. Is how you are also li uh, able, when filming a, v a big close-up, how that close-up can uh, makes you see a landscape, mm -hmm. and how a landscape makes you see a close-up of something. Eh? Mm -hmm. And this dichotomy between uh, uh, man, nature, uh, size, light, I think it's, for me, how I discovered, the only way to... To, to do films. I'm not right or wrong. It's the I way. think it's uh, crucial to, to be aware of those uh, yeah. distinctions. And mm. you've just answered one of the questions that I had that was uh, how does painting influence uh, director of photography, for example? How, how important it is to be 
aware of uh, the the lessons one could get from mm -hmm. painting and you've just answered that mm -hmm. for me because for me for example i feel it's very important or at least i have learned a lot from painting mm. before mm -hmm. i've known how to actually watch films uh you know i've watched films for a long time uh, you but did the opposite maybe like films to painting yeah i i mm -hmm. went from from films to painting and then mm -hmm. back to films again from painting i learned mm -hmm. what you said about uh, light for example mm -hmm. I, i remember one class i had when i was in film school and one of my teachers uh, showed the class it was a painting from vermeer then i started to realize how these little uh, objects can influence uh, big things so like a big painting you know just a, a little bit of a white color can give this small bit of light to the face mm -hmm. and just turn the painting into something kind of otherworldly and from there from then on i started looking at painting with a bit more attention and when i returned to film i felt like i had a deeper vision a deeper understanding of how light and the image works in general uh, so yes, I always felt and like maybe was... more than that you 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 understood how you could be free and manipulate things with light yeah for sure mm -hmm. for sure and uh, because for example when when i if i'm teaching documentary there are two things i just show uh, feature films and the first painter i show is vermeer because Vermeer is the great example uh, how and where he positioned his camera towards the source of light, which usually is the window on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I, 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 I always ask, uh, so what image will we have if Vermeer placed the camera in the side of the window? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and by there you can understand, you can explain how You can modulate light, or light can be a, a compressor and do a b-dimensional light because nothing is modulated. If I have the window here, if I'm filming you from here, nothing is modulated. So what Vermeer does, he has the light here, the window here, and he puts the, the camera there, let's say. Yeah. But, but then you go for something else, which is Caravaggio. Mm -hmm. So Caravaggio is more uh, complex because it looks like he created a film studio <laughs> yeah he obturates the lights of the windows yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, and how he dramatized the contrast mm -hmm. you see so uh, little by the little uh, uh, painting or painters but for me the start for for someone that wants to learn can be these two examples because it's like uh, uh, of course uh, uh, Vermeer placed his uh, workshop uh, where he just received reflected lights uh, from light from the clouds mm -hmm. uh, because the sun is on the other side uh, and of course uh, it looks like Caravaggio work with uh, cine HMI cine pars or or 10,000 took 10 sources uh, yeah. and, and 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 that it does is, look like that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that is right and and then telling you this uh, I tell you an, another thing which is interesting because being able to do great cinematography or less great cinematography deals a lot in the latitude of the world you're working You say, oh, the work of uh, Sven Nyqvist in Bergman films. Imagine if there was a Portuguese Bergman and a Portuguese Sven Nyqvist. Uh, the films wouldn't look the same at all. <laughs> mm. Why? Because the sun in that latitude uh, is much more lower and soft than in Mediterranean countries. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, if if we twist positions, almost a contemporary Portuguese cinematographer would be able to do the Sven Nyqvist world. I know I'm offended a lot of I'm offending a lot of people. I'm not removing the geniality of them, but what I do giving this extreme example, what I'm trying to say is that you're always uh, doomed or. Uh, Uh, how can you say, or conditionated by the latitude mm -hmm. and country you're working. Yeah. 
and that makes us uh, Mediterranean, Mediterranean people maybe a lot more prepared to everything that the guy that it's from Sweden mm. uh, or maybe a Sweden guy we would say that uh, San uh, Harshan is great mm. which is something that that I say I don't say it's great but, but when you film in Africa there always this thing that uh, oh we just film in the, uh, when the sun rises and the sun sets and I say but why oh, because the light is very always yeah. in the golden hour And yes, yes, <laughs> no, well, uh, and I said no, but uh, you need to to film in harsh light to feel that uh, that uh, when the sun is going down is a special moment. You cannot do a film with the with the light that you think it's beautiful. For me, it's not beautiful. That's days of heaven. Y yes, right, from well, uh, uh, that is <laughs> uh, uh, which Mr. is Almendros. yeah, which is yes, but uh, you should investigate the story behind that because Nestor Almendros didn't finish the film at all. Oh, he didn't? He, no, no, no. He was committed with uh, Romer. He received the Oscar. Mm. And the rest you 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 I'm go to, to read Google. about it. <laughs> there are, there is Axel Wexler, which is a great EOP there. Uh -huh. That there are many stories, but he says that really he understood. Uh, Nestor Almendro says something that uh, that that I, uh, it, it, he says I don't create, I search. Hmm. So he has the idea that seeing natural light and how the light. Uh, falls in a space uh, light is already invented so he's searching f uh, I, 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 I love some uh, films from Homer that he did but still that uh, thing doesn't enlighten me mm. as the directors we like so yeah. so Nectar, uh, Nestor Almendz is from that uh, that uh, line of uh, absence Of, or of uh, extreme reality, very well done. But they all have have many stories. He, he actually, John Bailey was camera operator, and uh, so. But the idea of of making a thing with the same light, that light uh, stops talking to you because it's the same. You you need mm. to have uh, dark to see light, or light to see dark, or uh, sun to to make uh, a harsh light and then so all the film is built by all these uh, dichotomies of 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 elements and uh, i really hate this idea of uh, oh the you know so but what is this uh, useful for our document oh but this is beautiful. if it's beautiful we sit and see the sun going down <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then what i notice especially in in foreigner directors that i work uh, worked in africa is that they arrive there searching for the representation of Africa in American movies. Uh, the way that have, they have already seen before they're trying to replicate it. Right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a bit Maybe they're searching uh, for Robert Redd for washing Meryl Streep hair in Out yeah. of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, um, but it would be useful that they discover... Do, it's what I say and it's not very nice. What I say to them is that... But that, what really is important to me is how you see the sunset mm. not uh, and then I joke that so we have here a tree I can make you here uh, uh, like this uh, Van Gogh painting where you have the sun behind the tree and the guy working so maybe this can looks like Japan mm. maybe this can look like, but what you oh it's but beautiful I mean beautiful in a film is something that uh, that is very easy mm -hmm. and being so easy is is a very weak way of uh, of uh, of trying to achieve a shot i was just yeah, uh, uh, talking about this this uh, book which is the, the one i really found that is really very nice the, the, the they analyze some movies is very good uh, you were just talking about yeah that's why cinema. yeah 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 i haven't heard uh, about this book no it's very it's good a, it's very good Very interesting. Yeah, they question. analyze some films uh, from Red Desert uh, to Nosferatu mm -hmm. to I don't remember more. Uh, 
I don't know which films they, they uh, talk. Yeah, Red Desert, The Marquis of Eric Romer, Jean-Luc Godard, Pierrot Le Fou, uh-huh. Muknaus Nosferatu, Tarkovsky's Andrei Rublev, uh-huh. Mizoguchi's Five Women yeah. and Around Hutamaro, Alain Cavalier's Therese, sí. Vincent, Vincent Minnelli's An American yeah, in Paris. American. It's, it's very nice uh, book. Sounds like a great reading, actually. Yeah, because uh, some mm-hmm. of uh, the, the most of the books I know that deal with this subject are really not... Uh, uh, ah, th- this is a, a very important uh, book uh, to deal with uh, understanding the space. I was going to ask you about this. When you mentioned uh, architecture and uh, yeah. space, and, and I noticed that he had brought this book with you, And I have this book as well, but I haven't read it yet. Mm-hmm. And I was going to ask you how no, it's, it's, influential uh, it's, or how no, important it's, it's, it was for you, for your understanding it's, it's, of space. It's important because as some films, some books are able to make you see things in a different uh, way. And that book uh, is, is, was essential because of that. That he's able for you to understand the space. Mm. Uh, and why yeah to understand the space why why space is like that why why things are shaped this way and that's very very interesting uh, so I, I remember the, uh, about looking at things the, this book is really very nice which mm-hmm. is a little bit the, 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 the story and how during the years uh, the technique was able to make you observe things Mm-hmm. Starting from the eye to the beginning of the cinematographer, you see. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it's very, very cool. Uh, so it's about the way that you perceive things. things and yeah, you yeah, yeah. And how, and how technique or inventions uh, conditionate your way of looking. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little bit how, how, um, how you say... How you are a uh, hostage of uh, inventions, how they yeah. shape your vision. Mm. So it deals a little bit what I said about uh, Renaissance, mm. yeah. more or less. Uh, um, what about, you mentioned music and painting and architecture. Uh, what about poetry yes. or literature? <laughs> is there I, anything that... I, I go everything that is like, you, you already understood, no? uh-huh. like uh, uh, catalogs, uh, theoric... The, um books uh, and then i grew up in a in a house full of books but uh, <laughs> i went to the bd <laughs> which the comics just, yeah. you know it's interesting because one of my uncles he's a great fan of cinema as well and he always told me ever since i was uh, quite young he told me that comics uh, are very much related to cinema in yeah. a way he told me yeah, that yeah, yeah. comics uh, have a very close relationship And he's a great fan of comics, especially French, Belgian comics uh, that you do as well. Oh, you would get along together. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Frank, Alex, yeah. Uh, I would borrow uh, <laughs> comics books from him, and so I would uh, be fascinated with yeah. them uh, when I was younger. Yeah, because they But have a decoupage. They have yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, so you get inspiration no, as well from no, comics not, in not, a sense, not or? really, not really. Uh, but uh, but. Um, Talking about books, uh, the first book I read that really smashed me, I think it was uh, Albert Camus. Uh, L'étranger? Yes, which no. is, uh, I mean... <laughs> I haven't read it yet, to yes, be honest. It was uh, really I've read uh, Sartre, The uh, yeah, Nausea. Yeah. You know, Then so there is uh, Turganiev, which yeah. I uh, Fathers and Sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a little bit European. Mm-hmm. And then I discovered, because of a great uh, friend, Katerina Almeida, uh, Platonov. Ivan uh, Platonov. Yeah. Uh, I haven't read him yet. I've read the And I read it already four times, the same book. There is a great uh, book from an American writer called uh, Winesburg, Ohio. I can... It's short stories, amazing book, amazing book. But uh, usually I go for more this kind, because of course a book can be really important about how you see actually literature mm-hmm. can, one of the most difficult things in cinema is how also you film 
a character's head. Yeah, the subjective uh, point of view. In books, is <laughs> <laughs> it's the f it's very easy, you no. know, to so that could be really an inspiration. Yeah. Or for me, it is Dostoevsky, for example. It's yeah. a great inspiration. Yeah, 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 and 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 also can be concrete in that point of view, but also if um, you talk, uh, so the the guy gets out of the home and gets his uh, book out. And that is multi because blue for me can be something for you is another thing for Pedro is another, you know? So <laughs> it can be very concrete in the things that are most subjective in cinema. And when they appeal to color, we are much more concrete because we sh we show the color itself. Yeah. So, so, but I have so many books to read. <laughs> <laughs> that I feel bad. Not not many, but I have some some uh, uh, fiction books and uh, uh, friends also lend me. Um, also, uh, there is someone that I really love. Maybe you haven't read which which is uh, Brett uh, Brett Easton Ellis. It's uh, less his first than zero. Book. Uh, less than zero. That's it. Uh, I, I, I read them all. Album. Like yeah, yeah. I haven't read the, the one. I've I've watched the movie uh, American uh, Psycho, but I haven't read the book. No. Uh, no. It, it's I, I, I love it yeah. because it's very strange uh, writing but you know it, it depends I felt like you would be more prone to reading for example poetry are you a fan of pro poetry or not I, really? I, I, I don't know of course I have uh, Arseny Tarkovsky book <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, of course uh, I have things uh, w f with Aikais and Aikus which are really uh, interesting the way they describe things yeah. I have plenty uh, of haikus in there, actually. Uh -huh. There's Matsuo Basho, uh -huh. Matsuo Kashiki, uh, Japanese I, I, poetry. Yeah. I know, I, I, I don't uh, have an idea of the names you... <laughs> but, but still, I have some things. Because there is something which is kind of stupid, which is... When I read, I'm always thinking how what I read will be able to teach me something for film. Yeah. Obviously, the examples you're telling me will be something very important for film, but still, I go for more basic things. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Uh, if, if I have to read the script, I don't have, I don't do any kind of sacrifice. If a director decides, oh, it would be interesting for you to read this book, I'll read it in two days. For example, Book mm. of this Quiet. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, it looks like my life changed from the day I read that book, which is <laughs> masterpiece book, and you know it by heart. For, for me as well. Yeah. yeah. So, great. So sometimes I maybe I have to have a purpose. I know myself should be uh, enough purpose to read something, mm -hmm. but I'm always trying to apply something in a more practical way. I understand. The reason why I ask is, is because sometimes I read poetry and I feel it's very uh, cinematographic. You know, I feel like when I read poetry, I could envision mm -hmm. the film as mm -hmm. I'm reading the, the lines, the verses. Mm -hmm. And actually, I wanted to read something to you. It's from a poet called uh, Walt Whitman, oh, uh, okay. an American. Leaves, leaves of and Grass and this. Uh, yeah. I've read this and I felt like he could be talking about a film. So... It's about a poem, and he says, A great poem is for the ages and ages, in common and for all degrees and complexions, in all departments and sects, and for a woman as much as a man, and a man as much as a woman. A great poem is no finish to a man or woman, but rather a beginning. Has anyone fancied he could sit at last under some due authority, and rest satisfied with explanations, and realize and be continent full? To no such terminus does the greatest poet bring, he brings neither cessation or sheltered fatness and ease. The touch of him tells in action. Whom he takes, he takes with firm, sure grasp into life regions previously unattained. Thenceforward is no rest. They see the space and the ineffable sheen that turn the old spots and lights into dead vacuums. The companion of him beholds the birth and progress of stars and learns one of the meanings. Now there shall be a man cohered out of tumult and chaos. The elder encourages the younger and shows him how they two shall launch off fearlessly together till the new world fits an orbit for itself and looks unabashed on the lesser orbits of the stars and sweeps through the ceaseless rings and shall never be quiet again. When I read this, I feel like 
this is what I get from a film, from a good film. Uh, you know, it's y yes, but at the same time, what uh, what is um, it's a great uh, writing, but it looks like. Uh, he's uh, giving a lesson at the same time <laughs> yeah. uh, now and yeah. the lesson he's giving us is like for me the thing that uh, everything we do must be very personal but if being personal can be universal exactly it's it's uh, so we you can really not measure the effect of a poem, of uh, a movie, of a music in in our life, it, it's not measurable, mm. uh, because you react emotional to things in very different ways. Mm. So something that is really um, touching for you, maybe it's for me, but maybe it's not for the kid that is playing. Happens all the time. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's very beautiful, of course. Uh, I, I like very much uh, Salinger. Uh, uh, J.G. Salinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was just <laughs> and, I haven't uh, read him yet. Uh, yeah. And um, yes, it's, it's beautiful, but it looks like... Uh, guys, be aware that... Uh, open your eyes, huh? Like... Uh, yeah, I guess what he's trying to say is that... Uh, well, I interpreted this as as if it was from a film, it's talking about a poem, but exactly like you said, it's a poem can be personal and at the same time universal, and it can transcend the literal meaning and uh, bring a whole new perspective into the world that you live in, whether you're a man or a yeah, woman yeah. or poor or rich or yeah, but uh, white or black, whatever. And but the effect is not measurable. Yeah, it's not and, me and it's for measurable. Me it's ineffable, like you said, the, the, so, the essence so, of the poem. So for me, the purpose of a poem, of a book, or a film, or a painting is not in it, 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 it it's not to be it's a manipulation that can awake your uh, emotions not feelings Certainly. emotions um, I, I have a book which is called pictures and tears and it's very interesting because it deals with uh, the author said to people write me a letter or describe me a moment where um, something really provoke an emotional thing in you. It's great because you have the ones that uh, changed, the, their life changed because they were in a motel in the United States and they woke up and there was a group, uh, a picture of a group of horses running in sunset. Mm -hmm. Or the guy who went to this chapel in the, in the States, I don't know the place where they are, and there is this chapel that that there is this circle that is surrounded by the Rothko black paintings, mm -hmm. uh, and that is great because uh, there is someone that sits in front of a Rothko painting, and like <laughs> so um, that deals exactly with uh, with this capacity uh, for example or if, uh, i just saw them once when i went to f to florence and saw and went to to see massaggio frescos yeah i looked up I, and i was like completely with the emotional thing about that very very strange it was the first time that happened to me it happened in the pyramids in Cairo. Mm -hmm. It happened in horse money. <laughs> so the the, the 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 ones I remember, of course, seeing uh, uh, Andrei Rublev of icons for real, it was very wow, amazing. But you've seen those those uh, yeah wow. in the Russian museum in Moscow, and you know they are like the size of these are uh, they in the pushkin museum or the hermitage or? not i'm uh, not in the hermitage the i think it's the pushkin museum. pushkin or russian uh, they are i remember you go downstairs and the, the these icons are these tall and you are like they're all quite large aren't they <laughs> oh yeah yeah they're they're imposing for me the idea of, of icons would be something more intimate they are as well but uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> when you're confronted with that, sometimes you're taken it's by. It's like wow, well, it's yeah, like yeah. Well. I've you know I've experienced that as well. I was in Cyprus uh, some time ago, and I went to these uh, uh, Greek Orthodox uh, churches in Cyprus. Some of them have been uh, destroyed, unfortunately, mm -hmm. by the invasion. But uh, the ones that have survived, some of them have these huge, beautiful frescoes that uh, hypnotize you in a sense and uh, make you... Mm. It, they send you to a state where you can't really express what you feel. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so I totally understand uh, mm. what you mean. And that's uh, the power. And, 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 and maybe these... Uh this Whitman uh, thing, I think it is about uh, that. Uh, mm -hmm. It is. João Botelho always says that the only truth about cinema is what you feel, because what you feel is true. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest is all a lie. So cinema sounds very similar to Tarkovsky, to what Tarkovsky yeah. would say. So you have to to build a bigger lie. To arrive to something, to, to a bigger truth. 24 lies per second <laughs> yeah. at the service of yeah, yeah, yeah. don't they say and, that? And when you feel something, uh, that is the only thing that is real, not mm. the film or whatever, yeah. you know. Because uh, people nowadays are really, for example, obsessed with uh, with Kais and uh, how uh, uh, 4K... Uh, these kind of things, uh, how much the quality of the camera, the camera is able to... But for example, for me, what is really important for uh, for the film is not... Uh, because every camera has lots of quality today, you know? mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, what is the texture you want to have in the film. Uh, texture, I mean... Uh, 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 how, stupid how clean must the film be or how and and uh, you have this example of the, the short film of Pedro Peralta uh, which uh, he wanted something that could look like uh, film then mm -hmm. and I said but uh, we can reproduce that in the grading but you know that in the grading shot with a digital camera yeah, no, with an Alexa yeah. we shot with this uh, famous uh, cook zoom uh, that I don't know by heart but it's something like 25 to 100 something which was the cook zoom that uh, Tarkovsky and Kubrick always <laughs> <laughs> which is something uh, for us that came from the director, but it's something for us that it's, it's this lens. And um, I was searching something that I could build for that film that could be uh, the planet of that film, mm. which already was a planet because it's a, it's a short film with three shots. Etc. So I, after I was doing a feature film and I looked uh, at the diffusion frame, you know, uh, like vegetable paper, mm -hmm. and uh, I asked for a black spray and I paint the, that uh, diffuser paper, diffusion paper with uh, black. Psh, psh, psh. Mm -hmm. So I did three, three ways of painting, one more... Uh, more full, uh, I I filmed that, mm -hmm. I take it to the grading, and what we did was mix that uh, painting with spray, with the image of the film, mm -hmm. and that is the texture you see. So people sometimes think <coughs> that the film is done in the, in film, mm -hmm. but that uh, grain is not organic. It's something still. And it's something very strange, and it's something obviously that I arrived to that film and would would not do to any other film. It was it was something that I actually wanted to ask you because you shot in both film and digital, and uh, do you have a, a preference or do you find uh, qualities in both of them? For me, it's difficult to answer because of this. If you we were able to still see film projected. Okay, in a projector, I would say film. Uh, when you film today in negative, what will happen is that your film will end 
и на хард диска DCP. So sometimes I feel that the the world of of film it's killed by the DCP itself because you you have a negative you make a positive you don't even make a positive you have, you make a digital image from your negative that will arrive to the editing table and to the grading mm -hmm. so the only thing that is really film is the negative you are exposing so um what the film did when a digital world arrived was something for me not very clever but uh, who am i to say this because they tried to go for quality itself and not for texture texture mm -hmm. itself so i give you a personal example which is uh, when we did the drivo um uh, i i i'm a dop that always exposed to the highlights huh? so sometimes you because exposure is also a, a dramatic tool so I, I i always say this example which is you are in uh exterior day in a floor in the forest no so the sun is reaching the forest and you have uh, shadows and light so there is the person who will uh, expose to the middle no because when i say now is like uh, I use exposure as a dramatic way to tell the story, okay? Mm -hmm. So, most of people I will tell you that will expose for the middle. There are the people who will expose for the shadows. They are the people who will expose for the highlights. I, I, I'm th that part. Mm -hmm. I will expose for the highlights. Because th uh, I, I, with your experience by eye, you can, when you're doing film, you can understand what will be exposed. Huh? But my main thing is always face. Huh? So I don't even use a, a, a light meter. I use always a spot meter, which is a way of measuring the light uh, in the, in a, when the light is reflected. So I, I could measure this here, the light that is coming from here. But doing this, uh, the machine doesn't count of uh, uh, which color you are, which, you know. Yeah. So uh, reading with a spot meter, I can see the, what, uh, what value your face is reflecting. And then you want to what the machine says. You have to inter interpret that. Because that spot meter will, um, as an example, you're filming snow. So if you point a spot meter to the snow, the spot meter will do this because it's very white. Yeah. So it will underexpose the snow. Your snow would look gray. Mm -hmm. So you read it. If it says eight, you expose uh, snow for four and a half, for example. Um, so, but basically, I will. My guide is the, is the, the 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 highlight is for what I expose. Huh? And in that film, uh, Dervo, what happened is that it was all exterior night. At the end, we have to put digital grain in the film because the negative was so good so so uh, clean so crisp yeah <laughs> and then what i learned from that experience is that so well, next time i will film what i'll do is that i will push the film to for the film to give me some uh, noise some uh, not noise noise is digital you know yeah. so a way for me to 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 fight against digital it's also to to push uh, the sensibility of the camera, which is something that people from the grading hate because you are changing the, the, the curve of the scene, yeah. but still it's a way that you can uh, like uh, put mud there to try to destroy it. Eh? Yeah. So uh, if you ask me if I would like uh, uh, 
uh, a scene for film in a different way for digital? No, not at all. I, I, uh, uh, the only thing is that you have understand the camera you're working, which is the latitude that you have. So you can see that I have uh, uh, vision when I have 11 uh, from overture till uh, to 8. So even today, when you're shooting with negative, if you do a totally stupid mistake, uh, the image will be there, you know. Yeah. So it's like you, uh, when you did photographs with um, positive, like uh, diapositives, that has a narrow latitude. Reversal film, which was a film that you put in the cameras, and when you develop, it's already a positive. The uh, news for television were made uh, with reversible. It has a narrow latitude. Uh, the negatives today are... Uh, what I think is really stupid is that industry gives you... Uh, for example, uh, I, I filmed the other day with Alexa 35. It's amazing latitude. But the question is that what will you do with that? Hmm. Because they are telling you uh, that, no, no, guy, you shouldn't make uh, pure blacks. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, oh, no, because we need to have detail on the blacks. But why? I, maybe I make a film where I want a black black. Or, you, you know, so also that's why I never use um, these uh, ways of seeing light uh, with a graphic representation. Oh, you don't use that? No, 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 no. I use the eye. Oh, just the uh, eye. Just the eye. Uh, in an extreme situation, I can put that on to see how overexposed is a window. Mm. You know, but yeah. uh, I, I mean, why uh, should a machine tell me what I want to see? <laughs> no, it's it's true. Why he's telling me? Oh no, that's too black. No, it's you have to choose the black one. So more and more with these cameras that makes you see everything. More and more that makes you not decide the thing when you're filming, mm -hmm. because the the lens and the camera and the sensor of the camera is able to put everything inside. And what is, oh no, then we decide in pause or this kind of stupid thing that I really hate, as you imagine. So I, 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 I see. I used to, to hear that a lot so when I was in film school. Oh, we'll fix it in post. No, because <laughs> your your vision yeah. has to be already in print. Yeah. In, I always in, try to, in shot. to shoot. As you want it to almost, look. Yeah, if I can yeah. shoot it the way I want to see it. Uh, yeah. But if you make that inscription in the shots, when the film arrives to the grading, there is a very important person, which is the grading guy, mm. which also has an artistical intervention in, in, the, in the film. Yeah. Because with the people I work, when I arrive in that stage, I take these albums, I take books, I take because I'm not a tech, tech, technical knowledge, you know. So I say, I want these, maybe these, these, these. And he, he will build something between the vision me and the directed, what, uh, director wanted, but he's building something more to our vision. Mm. And not just fixing things. Because if that guy is just fixing things, He's not doing a creative work. Yeah. And what I want is that the black will arrive black, more or less, huh? mm -hmm. and then he will be something. If there was a grading person here, he will say, no, but I want the black, not black, because maybe with a non-pure black, I can do this and that. But I can say, I don't want you to do something to that black. Mm -hmm. I want you to build something apart from that uh, idea. I know black doesn't have... Uh, detail or whatever but i want his vision after our vision mm -hmm. but in the same uh, road you know <laughs> yeah totally understand that uh john uh this has been an illuminating conversation i want to thank you yeah we so started, much for... we're starting daylight and it's already <laughs> night <laughs> it's already <laughs> night as we can see yeah no it's uh, a pleasure i mean this conversation could go on for yeah. hours uh, mm. but uh Perhaps some another time we will get to yeah, talk yeah, again. Yeah. It was so yeah, nice. Yeah, I've yeah. learned so much from you. 
So once again, thank you for no, it's a pleasure. being in here and accepting the invitation. No, it's a pleasure because you know what I felt when you mailed me and we were strangers. And in the second mail, we weren't strangers anymore, I see. Yeah, I felt like we connected <laughs> straight away yeah. uh, after talking to each other. So, yeah, this was great. Uh, thank you. And I will see you some next time. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>